Let's continue with the revision of mathematics paper 2022 GCE. Now we have our question 6a where we are told we are dealing with a probability question. So the question reads a bag contains nine identical cards, four of which are Kwanjuka cards, three Landa cards, and the rest are Ulera cards. Two cards are selected at random from the bag, one after the other and not replaced. Roman number one, draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes. So let's see how, how many outcomes are we looking at here. So we have our K for Kwanjika, L for Landa, B for Blela. Then from there, we can see that uh, there are, were are four Kwanjuka cards, uh, three Landa cards. Now, Bulela is missing. Now, what we are going to do is, before we proceed with our tree diagram, first we need to find the number of Bulela cards. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to add the two uh, types of cards then we subtract from the nine the total so in the bag we are told we had nine identical cards so from that nine identical cards we are going to subtract seven because four plus three we have seven then nine minus seven we can see that bulera were two so we had two bulera cards three lander cards for Kuanjika cards. If we can add these three all numbers, they need to add up to nine because that is our total. Now also here we can see that we are we are dealing with three chances. There is a chance of picking Kuanjika, there is a chance of picking Landa, there is a chance of picking Ulela. So since we are dealing with three three chances, we can see that uh, the tree diagram here, each part has uh, three branches. So now we can proceed with our tree diagram. So this diagram here, the one I've drawn, this is our tree diagram. And the reason why we have three branches, we have this branch, we have this branch, we also have this branch. So the reason behind why we have uh, three branches is because we have three outcomes. So the first uh, outcome, here we have K for Kwanjika, even here we are going to have a K. Then we are going to have the second one, we need to have a, a one, L for Landa, so L for Landa, so we have our L for Landa, then we have our B for Blera. So we have our B for Blela. Now from there, after we are done indicating the outcomes, we are going to now go back to our question. So the question is, we are told two cards are selected at random from the back, one after the other and not replace so whenever we are dealing with a question where we have been given a condition of not replace we have to be careful with this one so first let's indicate the probability of the first pick so here we can say this is our first pick then here we can say our second pick here so from the first pick, we are going to just write the probabilities for each the way they are. So the probability, let's find the probability for picking Kwanjika K. The number of cards for K is 4 over the total 9. Then probability for L, uh, we have 3 divided by 9. Then probability for B, Bulela, it's 2 over 9. So here, this part here, it is where we are going to indicate for Kwanjika. 
So here we are going to put, we have 4 over 9. Then here, this is for lambda. Lambda is 3 over 9. Then Ulela is 2 over 9. So we've done the first part and make sure the first part, the first part or our first pick here, the numbers should be the way they are. The subtraction must be done when we are dealing with this now, the second branch here. So now, since these, as they were selecting these balls, or I mean cards, they have given us a condition that the cards were not replaced. So, from uh, this, the first branch here, we are going to assume that the card which was uh, picked and not replaced is Kuanjika. So, since it was not replaced, we are expecting the number, the total number to be reduced. So, we are expecting the, num the total number to be, to be reduced from 9 to 8 since it was not replaced. So, we can see that if we assume we pick k and not replace we can see that we are going to have a 3 for k over 8 then for lambda lambda will still have 3 over the total 8 since we are assuming that what was picked here was k then for lambda we still have 2 over 8 okay now for the second branch for this for the l we are going to assume what was picked was Z, lambda. So if it was lambda that was picked without replacement, so we can see that the total number of lambda is 3. So if one is picked, we have a 2 over 8. Then for Lela, it's 2 over 8. For Kwanjika, Kwanjika will be 4 over 8. Because this time, we are assuming what was picked was Z, lambda. Now for, for the last branch here, we are going to assume what was picked was Z, Bulela. So if we have uh, two cards for Bulela and one is picked without replaced, so we can see that we have uh, one remaining. So we can say one over the total eight. Then for lambda, we can see that we still have a 3 over 8. Then for Kuanjika, we can have 4 over 8. Now, let's look at the pattern first. Let's look at the pattern, what is happening. So, you can now see that from this, the first branch here, the number that is affected is for Kuanjika. That is the pattern. Then for the second branch here, the number that will be affected is uh, for uh, lambda. Then for the third branch here, we can see that the number that is affected is lambda. So you can see the pattern. The first part, if you substitute, if we, you substitute for k, the a o and the b must be the same. Then for the second branch, if you substitute for uh, a o, the K and the B must be the same. Then for the third party, if you substitute for B, the K and the L must be the same. So that is the pattern. So we have done our first question for which we to draw a tree diagram. Okay, so now we move on to Roman number two. What is the probability that both cards selected are the same type? So we are trying to find the probability that both cards that were selected are the same type. So first let's do this. We are going to find the possible outcomes here. So the first thing we are going to look at where we are going to have the same letters. So number one here, this root here, this is the first of the same car, uh, type. So here we are going to have KK. Then here, the second is this one. So as we can see there, we are going to have uh, LL. Then the third is this part. There, we are going to have uh, BB. So since here, since here we have KK, these two are of the same type. 
these two are of the same type these two also are of the same type so if for you to identify a question like this where you are asked to find the probability of picking two of the same type you need to look at where you have the same letters so we can say now uh, probability we say two same type two of the same type same type So is equal to, we are going to have uh, the first probability KK plus LL plus BB. Then we do the substitution. The KK, this is our KK. So we can see that uh, the first uh, value for K is uh, this one. 4 over 9 multiplied by the second value for k is this one so we have uh, 3 over 8 plus we go for l the first value for l is 3 over 9 times the second value for l is 2 over 8 plus we go for b the first value for b is 2 over 9 multiply by 1 over 8 so we can now simplify so we can multiply 3 times 4 we have 12 over 9 times 8 72 plus 3 times 2 we have 6 over 72 plus 2 times 1 2 over 72 so here we can see that uh, no need of finding the lowest common denominator because the denominators for each fraction uh, are equal. So what we are going to do is we are just going to add the numerators. So we we'll say 12 plus uh, 6, 18 plus uh, 2, we have 20 over 72. So that is the probability of picking it two cards of the same type but if you want we can uh, reduce so we can reduce let's say let's divide let's divide the, the denominator and the numerator by two so we can say two into twenty we have ten over two into seventy two we have thirty six we can still reduce two into ten we have five over two in 236 we have a 18 so that is now is a simplified one for the probability of picking two cards of the same type okay so now we can move on to question b now this one we are trying to construct a flowchart corresponding to the above pseudocode so what we are given here is a pseudocode statement now this is a computer question so we can see the first we have start, enter, R, calculator, small letter, then L. If R is greater than R, then print error, the value of R is not valid. Or else calculate S is equal to pi times R plus R in brackets times L. And if print S, then stop. So, if you are trying to construct a flowchart, a flowchart, it is just a program that consists of uh, polygons. Now, here, we need to do the start here. So, the start is written in a polygon like this. So, the polygon where the start should be written should do. So, we can say we have a start. So, this oval shape here this oval shape here is for start then we look at the next step here enter capital letter r comma small letter r then l so these are known as the inputs and the inputs are always written in the parallelogram so we we'll say enter r comma r and L so this should be written 
in an in a polygon we call parallelogram so this is a parallelogram polygon from there we can move now this must be a question a question that will require for us to say yes or no so since we have been given if r is greater than small letter r so the question will be easy easy r greater than capital letter r and this one is written in a polygon known as the diamond or sometimes you may find it a rhombus so under this rhombus we are expecting to have two responses one should be yes the other one should be no now if we say yes here this then this then thing means if we respond yes so if we say yes therefore we need to print error the value of error is not valid so now this is what we call output so the output should also be written in a parallelogram polygon so we'll say the value of R is not valid so we can have uh, our polygon here oh now for this the next point is it or else or else is assuming that we have said no so if we say no we have a calculate so we need to now show the process so the process is now calculating so the process should be written under a tri a rectangle polygon so we we'll say calculate s z code pi times r plus r times l so this is the a rectangle where the process must be written then from there we have a uh, end if and if print so our print this is also our output so this is the result that we are interested we want to find the s so we need to say print s then we have our uh, stop here so now this is what we call this is what we call a flowchart now for you to understand a flowchart i advise you to go through papers you also research for you to know how to deal with a question like this one because sometimes it may appear to be hard but if you just get the pattern this is one of the easiest question you may encounter in mathematics paper too so thanks for this video and please don't forget to subscribe and share the video to families and friends.